there's an evil entity in the house. You are about to see real people. I was terrified beyond belief. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. I truly felt it was like living in hell. I felt like I wasn't alone. Literally grabbed me and spun in and bang up on the wall. When ghosts are invited into their lives. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Take one. In 1988, I was living with my husband and my one and two year old daughters. We had just left a small basement apartment, so we were pretty excited to be able to move into a, a three-bedroom split-level house. It was um, kind of like a dream come true at the time. The young family was just settling into their new life when Kat was contacted by someone she hadn't heard from in over a year. Maria was a friend of mine. It just out of the blue, and there was no call display then. I just, the phone rang, and I answered it, and it, it was her. hysterical person on the other end saying I need your help and what really got me was when she said they're gonna kill us well she arrived on my doorstep with her son she was a mess she was disheveled she was pale and immediately she's going I know you don't know me that well but I always trusted you, and I knew that you would help me. So I let her in. She began to open up to me about what had been happening. Maria and Kat sat down to catch up on the past 12 months. But every word that came out of Maria's mouth, Kat found horrifying. She said, my husband joined a cult. When Maria got pregnant, her husband made an appalling confession. Halfway through the pregnancy, he said, we have to leave here. I've done something really bad. We have to go. She said, when I had an ultrasound and found out I was having a boy, he promised that boy to the cult as a sacrifice. It took me a while to even process what was being said to me. Maria told Kat she was scared, but didn't really believe she or her baby were in danger. All that changed at her husband's birthday party eight months earlier, just after the baby had been born. They had had a, a birthday party. And then she said, I remember hearing my sister screaming, and I'm realizing I'm drugged. He's drugged us. She said, there were these people in my apartment. I mean, she said, I remember robes. I remember these black robes. And there was a fight, a physical altercation. <laughs> she told me, I get up. Finally, I can walk, but I'm still really dopey. And she goes, there's this knife in my kitchen sink covered in blood she goes and i don't know why i just started washing this knife she goes and then i look over and my husband's in this industrial garbage bag and i can see his arm is over his head hanging out of the garbage bag his throat had been cut from ear to ear nearly decapitated him and she said, I made it back to the couch and passed out. When she woke up, that garbage bag was gone. He was gone. And they found him in a field across from the apartment. She said, people at the funeral home, they're all trying to say, well, he committed suicide. No, he didn't. Maria's brutal tale did not finish with her husband's death. It was just the beginning. 
she began to tell me that shortly after the funeral, and actually someone called during the funeral and told her, it's not over, we're owed. That baby is ours, he was promised to us and we want him. And I said, what have you involved me in? Despite her reservations, Kat felt she had no other option but to invite Maria and her son to move in. It would turn out to be the worst decision of her life. I had no clue what was being brought or, or entering my life or my, my husband's life or, most importantly, the lives of my children. Usually people, when they get into the occult, there are attachments that will attach themselves to those individuals. And that individual spirit can move and manifest to another individual. Because you have to remember there's a different level of energy that's playing here, a different mindset that's playing here. And the mindset that I want to take over, the mindset that I want to empower, the mindset that I want to control. And they'll take that opportunity and they'll cause havoc with that person. Shortly after Maria had arrived, um, really some strange things had started happening. Um, I would put the children's toys away before bed. My husband would get up in the morning and the toys would be all out of the chest. And he'd say, what are you doing? Like, why do you always put them away? Someone's gonna trip. And I said, but I did. I did put them away. had been completely normal before Maria arrived. Kat now became convinced the strange events were linked to her friend. She feared that by taking Maria in, she had also invited in the spirit of Maria's dead husband. I had hung pictures that I liked. Some of them were very old pictures, I should tell you, so I loved them, but they would be off of the wall. Some of them were smashed on the floor, like someone had just walked by and, and hit them and knocked them off. But it's very painful, actually, was finding my wedding picture shredded. The glass was shattered, the picture is shredded. It was the last straw. Reluctantly, Kat told Maria she had to leave. But any hopes that the weird events would stop were soon dashed in brutal fashion. Smell arrived in my house. I was in the kitchen between dishes and I smelled this smell of rot, of decay. And all of a sudden, Inviting a troubled friend into her home, Kat Larston had also allowed a malevolent spirit to enter, and it was becoming increasingly violent. I was in the kitchen between dishes, and I smelled this smell of rot, of decay. And all of a sudden, I felt something against me. I couldn't move. <laughs> my husband saw my hips the next day and I had bruises, just black. Then he said, oh my God, like, did you fall or what happened? And I said, no, I was... I was attacked. I just want to go have a bath. I just want to bathe. But for Kat, nowhere was safe.
I feel his hand. It literally, the fingers were on either side of my the tops of my ears, and it pushes me under the water. <laughs> but I remember going, I have to get out of here. To tell him I have to get out, I have to get out. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die here. <laughs> the attack stopped as suddenly as it started. Having just survived one of the most terrifying experiences of her life, Kat tried to block it out of her mind and move on. Several nights later, I had put my children to bed, and I'm trying to watch TV, but I'm thinking about what happened. Kat was confronted by an enormous shadow figure. It literally filled the entire door. Black. This thing was massive. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my God, oh my God, because I could smell the rot and it just charged at me. <laughs> Once again, just as Kat thought she could take no more, the attack suddenly stopped. With her husband away, Kat was terrified of being in the house with just her young daughters. She asked her mother to come over. My mom was coming over. Hi. And so I had this um, big floral picture I had put up and I'm standing there talking to my mom and it just flies off of the wall and smashes. And all of a sudden, Something's got me. <laughs> Literally grabbed me and spun and then bang up on the wall. And my feet come up off the floor and the nail where the picture is hung, I'm slammed against the wall and it's pulling me down and the nail is gouging my back and my mom is screaming, what's happening? What's happening? What's going on? It's going to kill me. You have to go. Take the girls. I said, just go. Just go. It's, it doesn't want you. It wants me. <laughs> and I called my husband at work, and I said, I am done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't stay here. I can't live here anymore. I can't do this. I packed up my kids as much as I could grab in a quick amount of time and myself, and I left. I went to my mom's. I did call Maria's dad, and I said, I need to talk to her. There's more to this. I need to talk to her. And her dad goes, you know, this is it. I mean, after today, don't come back. If you come back, what's been happening to you will get worse. When that individual finds out the person that it came from, where the initial um, entry point came in their lives, when they confront that person, they're technically confronting the entity at the same time because that attachment is feeding off them. I don't even recognize the face on this girl, and she's wringing her hands. They said, I'll always love you, but I can't ever see you again. They said, please, before he kills one of my kids, please. This is your problem. I said, you know, you should have never brought this to my home, to me. It was over for Kat. After seeing Maria that final time, the attack stopped, and Kat's family went on to live a normal life.
Invitations to entities from the dark side are not easily revoked. Once a door is opened, the spirit world has a habit of sticking around. Story 19, take one, marker. After struggling with some health issues, Dustin Terry had been looking for a new and cheaper apartment for him and his son Austin to move into. What attracted me to the building was the location. It was listed and it was fairly cheap in the paper, so I decided to call and check on it. The building looked like your older classic uh, brick building with the old iron gate that still had the old wood that used to be the outside of the um, siding. You know, it's kind of like stepping back in history almost. I did not take my son with me to see the place at all. He actually just kind of got a surprise one day. I was hoping in this new place for a fresh start, basically. I was downstairs doing a little bit of laundry. The feeling I felt was just like you were being watched. I just blew it off as no big thing. There's something there as to what I don't know. Dustin Terry had just moved into his new apartment when he started feeling like he was not alone. I was downstairs doing a little bit of laundry the feeling i felt was just like you were being watched i was actually in the back part of my house i was folding my clothes and it sounded like someone opened my door and started walking into my house seen no one there it was mainly confused there's just no way to explain it really i did not think about wanting to tell my son anything i didn't want to bring that to his attention at that young of an age dustin had started to feel increasingly paranoid in his home he didn't want to tell his son austin about his experiences for fear of frightening him but the unwanted visitor left him with no choice I was at home. We were sitting down in the living room, and one can out of the middle fell off. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, it's nothing. Nothing at all. I pick it up, put it back up there, I start watching TV, and within 15 minutes again, the same can that I just picked off the floor falls down again. I was still confused. I still didn't want to admit it because I was still along the lines of these are older apartments. I was like, no, it's got to be something that's very explainable. 
It's, it just has to be. When uh, spirits do things like pushing cans off the shelf repeatedly the same thing or open a door the same thing, it's their sense of letting them know, letting the physical people know, I'm still here, I still exist, and that their process is, I still can do these things. Dustin put the events out of his mind and tried to get on with his life. His girlfriend of six months started staying over at his apartment. My girlfriend would come over uh, usually once a weekend. I was watching TV. She said that someone just walked in and someone just touched me on my back. So now it's starting to get physical, and now I know I have a major problem on my hands. Worried about a possible intruder, Dustin started searching the rest of the apartment. That it was just kind of eerie odd she just felt a presence like someone was standing behind her and she didn't seem too comfortable at that point in time i know there's something there as to what i don't know Dustin decided the strange incidents were putting his son and his girlfriend at risk, and he needed help. I needed to look for someone to come in and do something, so I called in a priest from the Catholic Church in St. Joe. Like, well, I think that a house blessing will help you, and I think we should start one. So I said, okay. So without him knowing about it right away, I grabbed my cell phone and turned on voice record and I put it in my back pocket just to see. He starts with a couple of prayers and he's reading from the scriptures as he walks through and he does the holy water routine in every room. We get back towards the back area and I noticed when he got back there, he was a little bit hesitant. I kind of monitored when they did leave that they were still pretty much looking around quite a bit. It wasn't like I had his 100% attention. It's like something else had his attention on the side. Dustin was not convinced the blessing had worked. After the priest had left, I decided to take the audio and transfer it over to my laptop. Austin had moved into a new apartment, but so far, it had not been a happy home. <laughs> Dustin felt that someone or something was sharing their space, and he had called in a priest to do a blessing. After the priest had left, I decided to take the audio and transfer it over to my laptop. was talking it was pretty quiet you didn't hear anything but whenever the priest would seem to want to start talking from the scriptures or do any kind of a blessing when he would stop there's this very specific and when he starts it stops and the minute he stops it starts back up again in the name of the father something 
something's talking back to him and doesn't want him here. The sun and the Holy Ghost. After I heard the recording, you know, I I was in a predicament as do I stay or go. I'm very tired of not feeling comfortable, uh, tired of not knowing if my kid's going to be all right in the middle of the night or if he has seen more and he's just not telling me because I don't think that's a very good environment for a 12-year-old. It didn't take long for Dustin's doubts about the blessing to be proved correct. One day, me and my son were coming up out of the basement from the laundry room. You hear a whisper again. You know, you can hear some footsteps. And we made it to the stop step. And we stepped onto the carpeting. And there was clearly coming up. Let's go. When you can't see something and you can hear the noise obviously going on, it's very, one of the most scariest things I think I've ever actually really been through. After the footsteps and everything going on, I knew I needed to look for someone to come in and do something. So I reached out to Lori to the Paranormal Society. I could tell in his voice that he was scared, and it, it was a very disturbing experience that he had been having. But the more people that I talked to and found out that I'm not the only one that was having these experiences. Lori and her team started an investigation into the apartment building and spoke with Dustin's neighbors. A lot of these older buildings, like the one Dustin lives in, were motels, and they were converted into, nowadays, apartments. So whatever happened in the motels, you're going to get what is called residual entities that are still there. You're going to get residual feelings, emotions in the building, and it, it's like glue to a wall. A lot of people who cross over are afraid to cross over, and they'll stay here. They'll stay with that opportunity in order to, to fulfill that sensation that they're still alive somehow. I had heard other stories from other people in the building. I figured back in the 1930s and 40s, somebody had opened a portal in there via a Ouija board and brought this thing through it and they did not close off the Ouija board and now these poor people that are in Dustin's building not only him have to deal with us. When I first moved in and had these suspicions I didn't think it'd get this bad but as it progressed it got worse and worse. Things like these are tied to the property is really it's hard to get rid of. My best suggestion to Dustin was move when it was financially possible for him to do so, because it'll just stay with the property. The following night, things got even worse. It was well after midnight. I decided to go to bed early. My girlfriend's gonna stay up, and uh, she said she gets the weird feeling of someone standing over you. And watch. She kind of glances over a little bit and she says, standing behind the curtains is a black mass that's standing there. And she looks down and she sees dress shoes. That was about the last time she stayed the night. That manipulation of energy is all fear-based. And the more fear that that entity can create, the better it is the chancing of it surviving. It makes me wonder, you know, what is it doing at nighttime when I'm sleeping in bed? Is it standing there watching me? If you're scared, that's energy for them. They take that energy and they feed off of it and they grow on it and they create more havoc. Two days later, 
I could hear the sound again of somebody walk through, but this time I'm able to to see that direction. And I can hear from a walk through my house, walk through my living room, and walk into my bathroom, and it walks back out. And instead of hearing a normal close of a door, it's like someone slammed the door. Previous occupants of Dustin Terry's home had opened a portal to the spirit world and invited evil into his apartment block. Now he had to deal with the terrifying consequences. I can hear from a walk through my house, walk through my living room, and walk into my bathroom, and it walks back out. And instead of hearing a normal close of a door, it's like someone slammed the door. I was done. I was literally done. I got up. It must have been 12, 31 o'clock. I grabbed my wallet, my cell phone, and I took off walking for the next five hours that night. Now I don't stay at home unless either my son comes over or my girlfriend comes over. I refuse to stay the night in my house alone. For now, Dustin Terry is stuck in his haunted apartment, but can't wait to move out. I spend a lot of my waking moments every day trying to find a different apartment, a different place. Whether spirits are invited into a property through people meddling with the occult or by simple accident, the results can be equally devastating and can affect the victims for years afterward. Story 9A, take one. I had just moved to Lansing. I transferred from, for work, I transferred from our Detroit office. Nathan was my boss, and uh, we just clicked very well. We started dating just a couple months after we met. A month later, I ended up pregnant. Surprise! He ended up very quickly moving out to Lansing with me. Got the house together and I'm a stay-at-home mom so it's important for me to find a house that I feel comfortable in. The house was it was cute small house. Four bedrooms perfect for myself Nathan and you know Adam who's one. He liked the house because he had the room to run around and you know he had a pretty good sized yard for him. Lillian is a practicing Wiccan and she saged her new home to cleanse it of any negative energy. Being a Wiccan and being a witch, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your family. She would go around the house with it kind of smoldering, and she would have a prayer that she would say. When someone cleanses their house with sage, they're going from room to room to sweeping out the rooms to removing the cobwebs of negative energy. That intention is very powerful, very strong. She knew I came from a Christian background. I was, I guess you would say, typical, closed-minded, you know, about those types of things. And it just always seemed real cheesy to me. Adam started seeing um, a little boy Got him up. You know, he started complaining about it, like, you know, he's just out there and he's watching me. I was playing with Adam and, and he had brought up the little boy being outside. I knew it wasn't a little boy because our neighbors didn't have little boy children and our house was kind of far off of the road so there is really no way I knew it was a ghost I knew I, I right away and I had asked him you know is he scary does he 
You know, does he frighten you? Does he make you uncomfortable? And he said no. So I told him, I said, well, tell him to come in and play with you. And right away, he said, come on in and, and play. He shouldn't have done that. <laughs> It started creating some really bad problems. When a child invites someone that's their, their play children, you know, that's outside, they're playing in there, they're coming to the house, that spirit will manifest itself into a little boy, a little girl, a little friend. And sooner or later, this, that entity will start ostracizing against the mother and the father. We would play music for Adam when he was going to sleep, and it was always on really soft, and it was up on the dresser where he couldn't reach the, the iPod and the, the little radio it was connected to. We were just laying in bed. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. We were watching TV, and uh, I heard music, and it was like really loud. a certain playlist for him and it would jump off of the playlist into the song into the artists go down to a specific artist and play a certain song it got to the point where it was almost a daily occurrence I was afraid that it had something to do with, you know, in me inviting the, the ghost or whatever it was in, inside the house. And having been invited in, this entity was only going to get worse. When a negative spirit enters your house, it feeds off of the negativity, not just fear, but off negativity. So it makes people fight inside their homes. There was an incident where we were arguing. Wait! What about you? Not? Your boy! Nathan Tegardine had inadvertently invited a ghost child into his family's home. His wife Lillian knew immediately that he had made a huge mistake. I started to feel really uneasy. Just about the, the atmosphere of the house had shifted. It went from being a comfortable home um, just to a real uneasy feeling all the time. When a negative spirit enters your house, it feeds off of the negativity, not just fear, but off negativity. So it makes people fight inside their homes. There was an incident where we were arguing. Wait! What about you? Your boy! It's just something that, again, you can't explain. There was nobody in that direction where the mirror even came from and neither of us owned that mirror. I had never even seen it before, and I had no clue where it came from. She didn't know where it came from. It wasn't anything good. When spirits support things, they take things from their timeline and they manifest it into this world. There is objects that they can manifest, like spoons from 1912, um, forks from shoes to different objects to let you know that they have the ability to move those objects. What do you do in a situation like that? The frightening events were putting an increasing strain on Lillian and Nathan's relationship. We were laying down watching TV and I felt a knock from underneath the bed. And at first, I, I thought it was my imagination, because it was a pretty hard hit. At the very end of the bed, she looked down and saw... It had no eyebrows, and his eyes were just completely black. And it's just staring at me. I knew it wasn't good. 
I knew it wasn't something positive. I knew it was something that couldn't have the best intentions. Causing harm was, was something I was afraid of. I was afraid of that's where it was escalating to. It was getting to the point where it either could cause harm or was going to try to cause harm to somebody. Looking to escape their troubled home, the family decided to relocate. So we ended up moving into a house in Eaton Rapids with another addition to our family, our uh, second son, Caden. It was beautiful. My aunt actually owned it, and we were renting from her. And this was a house that Lily had talked about wanting to live in since we got together. Five bedroom, fenced in backyard, perfect for the kids. So I was really excited. I was pretty confident that that it hadn't followed us. Whatever, whatever it was, was staying, you know, staying put. Nathan could not have been more wrong. Having been invited to join their family, the evil that had been plaguing them started up again. Almost immediately after we moved in, I started to experience things. We wanted our younger son, you know, closest to us. His bedroom was right across from ours on the, on the upper level. I think he was crying pretty dramatically, and we went, we went up into the bedroom, and his crib was pulled away from the wall. All the way next to the edge of the closet door. put his crib in the room, it would be dragged towards the closet door. At that point, I would get a really negative feeling being in that room, and I wanted to get out of there. Fearing for the safety of their new baby, Lillian and Nathan decided enough was enough and moved house again. Within a week, I found a house. I put a down payment. We were, we were set to move. It really was hard to have to move out because I, I really did want that house. Since all of that happened, I'm not skeptical at all when it comes to paranormal experiences. When it comes down to it, Nathan's mental well-being is more important than my comfort. I was very happy to, to be away from such a, a negative feeling. Nathan has learned his lesson not to mess around with the spirit world, and so far, their new home has been paranormal-free. <laughs>